Well, it's research that has gone viral and quickly. Psychologist and author Jonathan Haidt is calling for parents to make a change. His recent book, The Anxious Generation, explains why our children need less tech and more real life. He says their mental health depends on it. In fact, he claims we have overprotected children in the real world and underprotected them in the virtual world. Well, today our focus is on the overprotection part. We wanna know how we can safely expose our kids to the quote, real world, and how to strike the balance between granting independence and keeping kids protected. Psychologist Dr. Todd Corelli is joining me. Great to see you, to see you. our tan Hawaiian friend. Yes. Back from the beach, back from back vacation. Back from the beach, I'm gonna go back again though. It looks good Thank on you. You, you know, I, I'm so glad we're focusing in on this aspect of Jonathan Haidt's research because so much attention and noise has been made over his social media recommendations, right. Right. which are equally important mm -hmm. and on point. But this idea of overprotection, how did you interpret it? How are we overprotecting our children in the world? We're not letting them get hurt. Mm. I was at the beach the other day. Yes, you were. There was a little five-year-old boy who was going from the grass to the sand. It was about an eight-inch drop. Mm -hmm. And Dad ran over and mm. picked him up and gently put him in the sand. I think the boy could have survived the drop. <laughs> right? And so I think that there, I mean, that's an extreme example. But we have a tendency to be overprotective helicoptery, right, to the yeah. point that we don't let kids learn and grow from from pain and suffering and choices and sure. experience. I think even beyond the tendency, which is for sure at the root of it, but I have a very assertive, strong, physical five-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. And the looks I feel from, I've had to work on this, right? Mm -hmm. On letting her climb and knowing she's capable yeah. and doing it safely, but letting her go. Mm -hmm. And the looks I get and the feeling I get from moms on the playground, like mm -hmm. whose kid is that? Cause she's little, mm -hmm. right? I think there's a pressure that comes with this from other parents. Oh, for sure. And moms get shamed for this. I feel that. Yeah, just don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, really, you're you're doing something really great by letting her do that rather than withholding her. Yeah, so. yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. Research does show that risky independent play, though, is good. How do we define risky, Todd? How do you define risky? I think risky is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. So, like, the, the risky for that dad putting his boy into the sand, that wouldn't be risky to me. There's another story of a mom who, I don't know if you heard this story, but she's the New York City mom whose 11-year-old came to her and said, I want to ride the subway. Mm. So she and her husband talked about it and they let him ride the subway. He got on the subway, he made some mistakes, he got lost, he asked the guy for help, he figured it out and he got back home. And talk about getting shamed. I mean, she's actually written a book about it now. Yeah. But the confidence that came, if you saw, they made a video, if you see the look on this boy's face when he gets mm. back from this trip, it's amazing. And knowing that you know your kid best. Right. Like she knew he could do that. I know Lucy can climb. And, and she was playground. willing to take the risk. I mean, yeah. we all would be freaked out about seeing our kids on a subway sure. in New York. Right? Sure, right. sure. What about teens? How does this apply to older kids? I think kids? it's the same, except teens are now, we're kind of, they're mini adults, right? So we're trying to prepare them so they're closer to us. So like my daughter, when she was a teenager, one of my daughters, she's a pretty anxious kid. She would earn money on a job and then we would make her, she'd she wants to give us the money and as us go deposit in the bank. You know, you're gonna go, she had to go get something notarized in the bank. We mm. laugh about this nowadays because mm. she's an adult now. Yeah. But little things like that, that help them become an adult. Like yeah. We want to speed that up. I think I've shared this before, but my parents were quite good at this. I would call mm. my own babysitters. Oh, as really? A seven, yeah, oh, yeah, as a seven year old, like practicing those communication yeah. skills. And I remember being freaked out or I would get sent into the grocery store with a $5 bill to buy a gallon yeah. of milk. And I remember feeling anxious, like, do yeah. I have enough? Is right. this but those experiences are so building and so growing. When you can do something little, then you can do something bigger. I and love that. And when you can do something bigger, you can do something even bigger, right? So let's tick through some specific benefits of this independence. Mm -hmm. Child to teen, they get experience. Experience is the grand teacher, right? We all have words, we all have little things we wanna say to our kids and they blow us off all the time because we did that to our parents, but experience is what teaches. They become resilient. Resilient comes from solving problems. And when you, like I just said, when you can solve a little problem, you can solve a bigger problem. They find confidence. Yeah, they, they like the boy on the subway, they start to believe in themselves. This is a natural byproduct of being independent and autonomous. And this is one I didn't think about, but you illustrated it well in the subway story. They learned how to cope, like they learned how to figure it out. You know, coping is the exact opposite of avoidance. Mm. So 
And what we see nowadays, like people ask me, what do you see all the time in your job as a psychologist? It's, a, it's kids avoidance. They, they can't yeah. do things. Yeah. Coping is the basis of self-esteem. What would you say then, Todd, to the mom who does feel anxious, who sees the studies, hears the research, but still feels nervous? So you're a mom. Yes. If I, say, if I came up to you and said, okay, I've got a little trick for you, and if you'll just do this, your kids will be confident, they'll be resilient, and they'll have coping skills. Would you want to listen to what I had to say? I would jump in a heartbeat, of course. So it's that, and you have to remember for us anxious people, worry is a trick, it's a brain trick. So 99% of the things we worry about never happen, and so our brain goes, oh, well, I must keep worrying then because I'm keeping it from happening, right? It's a trick, mm -hmm. and you have to take the risk. And what about to the mom or the parent who might be feeling that pressure I talked about or that parent-to-parent -parent pushback? I just say, go mom. Go mom. Really, go mom. And, you know, it's, uh, it's hard in, in today's day where we all are always worried about what people think of us. Yeah. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Hoda Kotb on the Today Show shared a similar story as your Subway um, narrative, but she let her daughter go to the bodega. Yeah. And, and just watching her, granted in front of America and with the country listening and watching and probably judging, she was mm -hmm. like over explaining yeah. the precautions she took right, right, and right. why she was prepared. Right. But it's like, they can do this. They can do these right. things. Yeah, our kids yeah. will still surprise you mm. with how capable they are of doing something or at least figuring out when they come up against a roadblock. I love it. I love your words. They're reassuring and confidence-inducing, all wrapped in one. You're good at that, Todd. Thank you. Where can we hear more advice from you? Dr. Todd Talks on YouTube, podcast, Instagram. Dr. Todd Talks. You should be following. If you aren't, yeah. we'll link you over and save some Hawaiian sun for us, okay? <laughs> Thank you.